Hello students, welcome to EPG Patshala. Myself Monica Saini, I am from Department of Anthropology, University of Delhi. Today, I am going to discuss about a module which is entitled as Morphological, Serological and Biochemical Methods under Forensic Anthropology paper. After going through this module, you will be able to define and describe the morphology of human beings. Students will also be able to describe the blood test and their characteristics. This module will also let the students to understand the biochemical methods. Paternity means fatherhood, the quality or state father. Nowadays, more paternity dispute is arising. Paternity dispute, these relations involve domestic relations like to deal in divorce cases. When a child is born after divorce or before the date, date of marriage, when third party is alleged to the father of one of the children, then he is referred to as putative father. This can be arise in the case of infertility, extramarital affairs or to claim the property from father. So, things can be solved by the analysis of the blood group and DNA analysis. Saliva is the usual source for DNA analysis and in genetic studies it can be used in the settlement of paternity disputes. In this module, we will discuss the morphology, serology and biochemical approaches to solve paternity disputes. Some of the te tests that are ordered by the court to prove the paternity like PCR that is polymerase chain reaction, STR short tandem repeat and DNA test. Morphology deals with the branch of biology which deals with internal and external structure of an organism. It is divided into two parts that is anatomy and adonomy. Anatomy deals with the structure, shape and relationship of any of the part of the body of an organism while adonomy is concerned with the external morphology of an organism. Morphology include hair, face, dental morphology, hand morphology, skull and chromosomes. First, we will talk about the morphology of human hair. The structure of the hair include root, shaft and a tip end. The hair root is present in the skin enclosed by the hair follicles. Hair can be examined by naturally falling or that is pulled away by the force. If the hair root found with the dead roots, then it reflects that the hair has fallen naturally. If the hair root is leaving and bulbous is in nature, then it reflects that hair has pulled away by the force. And if the hair roots having both dead roots and having bulbous structure, then it reflects that hair has been pulled away by the force. The next part of the hair is shaft. Shaft is the portion of the hair that emerges from the root and it is extended up to the tips. Shaft indicate the length and cross section of the hair from where it is originated. For example, if the hair is having three concave sides, then this type of hair belong to the mustache or beard. Oval or kidney shaped hair belong to the torso. The next segment of hair is tip. Tips are the extreme upper portion of the hair. Hair cut indicate its state. Stepped or Ill irregular tips are cut hairs having blunt cut. Clean cut tips indicate that hair having sharp cut edges. Such edges are cut from the razor, scissors or blade. The hair DNA testing 
is done by the oral swab. Swab is very simple to use and it is successful in proving the paternity cases. Forensic expert collects the hair sample from the place where incident have been taken place. Hair that cut or shed down contains the DNA. For cut hair, specific test is known as mitochondrial DNA test. I'll be talking about the morphology of human facial skeleton. The primary bones of the human face include mandible, maxilla, frontal bone, nasal bone, zygma or zygomatic bone. The mandible bone is a U-shaped bone. It consists of lower jaw teeth. Mandible is the only bone in facial skeleton which can be moved. It is used for mystification processes. Whereas the maxilla forms the roof for oral cavity and flow to the lateral wall and it also forms the floor to nasal cavity. The frontal bone is a bone which is found in the forehead region. Nasal bone are two small oblong bones placed side by side at the middle and upper part of the face. Whereas the zygma or zygomatic bone, these bones are responsible for the prominences of the cheeks below and to the sides of the eyes. Serology is the properties and effect of serums in the analysis of blood traces. The biological particles are present in semen, saliva, fecal matter and perspiration. The presence of foreign particles like drugs, alcohols or poison in the urine, they can be detected by the specialist in the toxicology and in the chemistry branch. Karl Landsteiner in the beginning of the 20th century demonstrated the serum of the person that would agglutinate the red blood cell which contain the antigen factors and blood serum containing the antibodies. Two antigens A and B were identified with two antibodies that is anti A and anti B. So if a person has one of the two antigen so his or her blood type will be A or B. Lansteiner in 1927 he also discovered additional blood group which was referred as MN system and in 1940 RH blood group. In 1910 certain scientists that discovered that blood group were having certain traits that are inherited according to the genetics law. So therefore it could be used for the case of paternity in criminal investigation. Then in 1985 major breakthrough was in the forensic science occurred through forensic serology. Alec Jeffrey and his colleagues discovered the DNA structure. Students, now you will be acquainted with physical properties of the blood. Blood is a specialized tissue of human body. The main function of blood is to supply nourishment, especially oxygen to the cellular elements of the tissue of the other parts, removing the waste product of the metabolic activities, especially carbon dioxide. It maintains the required temperature of the body. It is also helpful in proper balance of the fluid substances in the human body. Blood circulate through heart, arteries, capillaries and vein. It consists of plasma, RBC that is red blood cells, WBC that is white blood cells and platelets. The color of blood is red because of the presence of hemoglobin. Hemoglobin binds the oxygen in the inhaled air in the lungs. Plasma is the liquid part in the blood mixture while Red blood cell, WBC and platelets are the solid parts. Clotting of the blood takes place due to the 
separation of fibrin from plasma then the liquid is left behind and it is referred to as serum generally human body consists of 5 and half liter of the blood the diagram is showing you composition of blood blood is con blood consists of plasma red blood cells white blood cells and platelets now you will be knowing about the significance of blood group system blood groups are very useful in identifying the problems of paternity cases it is based on the fact that blood groups are inherited according to the mendel laws for example in case where putative father and mother of child both having blood group o but child blood group is b then in this kind of case it can be solved by the mendel's first law of inheritance that is law of segregation whereas in the second case when parents are homozygous for any blood group genes then child of this parent carry e gene when father is rh e e then each child inherits rh e any of the child having rh type e e belongs to another father this can be solved by the risa system now i'll be talking about the test which determine the paternity cases first i'll talk about the lutheran group paternity can be accepted only after the first order exclusion when child is lutheran a and antigen is not found in the putative father and mother then we have to be very careful because suppressor gene which inhibits both lua and lub is known to be occur in lutheran system so to prove suppressor gene that is not working or not working to test the family with anti lutheran b in case of the duffy blood group in this test the paternity anti fya antibody is tested with fya antigen we should be very careful for the presence of the alleles which are negative anti fya and anti fyb the abo blood group system this system is very useful for several years in family studies only minimal cases shows the abnormalities in case of mutation where mother was a b and child is o or in the case where in one generation b gene was suppressed in recent years more advanced techniques have been developed to determine the paternity that is human leukocyte antigen and electrophoresis method first i will talk about the human leukocyte antigen that is hla high degree of discrimination of hla system make more accurate probability for determining the paternity it cause the revolution in paternity determination after combining hla with red cell antigen test the second advanced technique is the red cell enzyme and blood serum protein by electrophoresis method many blood serum protein and red cell enzyme have proven useful in determining the paternity test because protein and enzyme they their process follow the mendelian inheritance pattern now i'll be telling you how to locate the blood on the object if some dark or red stain is found that means it is blood sometimes stain may be very small or they may be present on the dark surface of the floor there are some tests to determine the blood stain these tests can also be used to locate the blood sample first is the luminol blood test and second is the fluorescent test first i'll tell you the luminol test luminol is a reagent 
which with the help of hydrogen peroxide goes to oxidation on alkaline solution in the presence of heme fraction of hemoglobin heme catalyzes the reaction but it does not take part in the reaction hemoglobin is present in the blood which carry the oxygen and carbon dioxide from cell to cells the luminol test after reacting emits the light and during the crime scene area where the area is darkened the luminol reagent test is applied when luminol reagent is applied it appears blue to yellow green color which shows the presence of the blood this color lasts for 30 seconds and this lasting disappear when another reagent is applied the next test is the fluorescence test fluorescence test also emit lights when it reacts with the oxidant and heme it undergoes to the fluorescence in the suspected place of the blood stain it is applied with the hydrogen peroxide strong emit light is used to induce the fluorescence the luminol and fluorescence test they are very useful for locating blood on the larger surface but for the confirmation of the blood two another test are used that is takayama test and tishman test both test is the microcrystalline test when a crystalline reagent is added to the suspected blood formation of the crystal shapes occur and the presence of the heme in the blood is confirmed the seminal fluid semen is a mixture of variety of organic inorganic sperm and cells sperm consists of head and tails the head of the sperm it consists of dna from male and the tail of the sperm it helps in moving semen is a viscous whitish secretion of male reproductive organ which contains spermatozoa and it consists of secretion of testis prostate bulbourethral gland and seminal vesicles sperms are made up of head midpiece and tail the head of the sperm consists of acrosome nucleus containing chromosome and the midpiece of the sperm it includes mitochondria that provide energy for swimming of the sperm the diagram is depicting different type of blood stain that is passive stain projected stain and transfer stain now i will tell you about the blood shed events at crime scene amount of the blood vary depending on the circumstances of the events the amount of the blood force will determine the pattern and volume of the blood stain in case of the sharp force injuries such as in stabbing that is forcefully ca caused by the object like knife ice pack in that case less blood deposit on instrument and d blood patterns are linear pattern in the case of gunshot injuries that is caused by the bullets entering and existing through the body it leaves the stain that is mist like spatters in case of the blood force injuries that occurs in the case of beating or hitting that is done by hammer or bat the object impact the large surface area and collect more blood that has varying size of blood drops blood evidences can be collected by swabbing the samples of dried blood and which can be used to develop a dna profile some other biological stain and fluids include saliva vaginal secretion and seminal fluid saliva is secreted in mouth for digestion of food it consists water proteins 
enzymes and salt saliva is mostly secreted from sublingual submandibular and parotid glands these all glands are known as salivary glands density of saliva is higher than the water that ranges from 1.002 to 1.012 saliva is slightly acidic in nature its solid substances consist of several cells such as epithelial cells yeast bacteria enzymes which are present in the saliva include lipase amylase and phosphatase the figure is depicting composition of saliva saliva is composed of 98% of water and rest of the matter is consist of solid materials the solid material is again composed of organic and inorganic matter organic substances of the saliva include fatty acid lactic acid albumin protein creatinine glucose riboflavin and urea whereas inorganic substances include anion carbonate phosphate sulfate sodium potassium calcium and different kind of cations the presence of saliva is detected by the alpha amylase test alpha amylase is a enzyme which is useful in breaking the starch present in the food to identify the alpha amylase the starch iodine test is used saliva has also been proven useful for solving the paternity cases saliva has the good sources of dna in several studies it has been proved that dna bending pattern obtained from saliva are good sources it is also helpful in giving the justice to the victim to prove a leak father to be biological father now i'll be talking about the vaginal secretions the test which is used for vaginal secretion is glycogenated epithelial cell test the glycogenated cells are formed during the menstrual cycle and its quantity depends on the menstruation cycle menstruation cycle produce the ovulation and ovulation produce highest number of glycogenated cells glycogenated cell stain with the periodic acid shift reagent after staining glycogenated cells give bright magenta color so students now you will be knowing different type of stains which are used for the analysis of blood pattern basically there are three types passive stain transfer stain and the third stain in the that is projected or impact stain where first we'll talk about the passive stain the passive stain includes drops flows and pools and typically result from the gravity that is acting on an injured body the second type of stain is transfer stain transfer stain it result from the objects coming into contact with the existing blood stain and it leaving wipes swipes or pattern surfaces or pattern transfer behind such as a bloody shoe print or a smear from a body being dragged the third type of stain is the projected or impact stain impact stains result from the blood projecting through the air and they are usually seen as spatter but it may also include gushes splashes and arterial spots now i'll be telling you different test for semen the preliminary test for semen is a seminal acid phosphate test and bentamine fast blue b is the major reagent which is used for seminal test the confirmatory test for semen 
is done by a pair of dyes that is referred as picro indigo carmine and the test is referred as nuclear fast red test both tests collectively known as a christmas tree stain the test is developed for semen sperm cell visualization oligospermic person has low sperm count aspermic person has complete lack of sperm in semen if a person has semen that is below the limits then it is tested with the prostate specific antigen that is p30 p30 is a secretion which is secreted by the prostate gland a special antigen body test kit is also developed seminal stain detection test are acid phosphate test creatinine in phosphokinase test ammonium molybdate test florence test barbario test semen specific glycoprotein test enzyme linked amino sorbent assay test ldm isoenzyme test and acid phosphate isoenzyme test you will be knowing about biochemical methods the biochemical methods are used for detecting alcohol consumption a number of biomarkers are used for the presence of alcohol these biomarkers include gamma glutamyl transferase alanine amino transferase aspartate amino transferase carbohydrate deficient transferring whole blood associated aldehydes first i'll be talking on the gamma glutamyl transferase it is a large molecule of glycoprotein that consists of protein and carbohydrate and it helps in the digestion found in the liver cells and in other cells that produce bile including biliary epithelial cell the second is the alanine amino transferase and third is the aspartate amino transferase alanine and aspartate are the enzyme that helps in metabolizing amino acids which are the building blocks of protein alanine and aspartate are less sensitive than ggt that is gamma glutamylase transferase and they are more useful for detecting liver disease alt that is alanine amino transferase is more specific of alcohol induced liver injury because it is found in liver the next marker is cdt that is carbohydrate deficient transferase cdt is another form of glycoprotein transferring it is a molecule that is responsible for carrying iron within blood stream transferring contains 4 to 6 molecule of sialic acids heavy drinkers have high amount of cdt form in comparison to the normal person and the another marker is which is used for the presence of alcohol is whole blood associated acetaldehyde marker that is also referred as wbaa the table shows you different type of specimen that are recommended to collect in different type of cases for example peripheral blood urine and vitreous humor is collected in all type of cases liver bile is collected in case of homicide and suspicious cases lung fluid and liver tide of lung these specimen are collected in the abuse cases gastric content and liver bile is collected in the cases related to drugs in case of heavy metal poisoning kidney hair and liver specimens are recommended whereas serum is obtained in case of biochemical abnormalities the table is showing you the various tissues that detect the useful substance for post mortem for example blood urine hair 
and liver it provide the samples of all drugs and poisons bile it provides the sample of the substances like morphine and narcotics lungs gives the specimen substances of butane toluene and other solvent vitreous humor provide samples of narcotics glucose urea creatinine antidepressant and alcohol the table shows you different type of analytical methods that are used for the biochemical examination of calcium creatinine glucose urea for example iron selective electrodes are used for the examination of chloride natrium and potassium hexokinase method is used to check the examination of glucose enzymatic method are used to detect the presence of urea so students now let us see what we have studied in this module to solve the cases of paternity disputes several techniques have been developed the presence of dna that is deoxyribose nucleic acid in saliva hair blood and hla that is human leukocyte antigen it made more easy to solve the cases hla red enzyme protein test gives more accuracy to determine the paternity nowadays falsely accused putative father can be excluded from paternity in 90% of all the cases most paternity test is done for providing the justice to the victims and for the financial reason to give legal rights and to provide the support and responsibility for innocent and justice to the victims thank you